So this is part five. We continue. We don't want to let off. If you haven't seen part one, please start part one because you're not going to understand what's going on. Okay? But again, so Jesus basically called this woman a dog. All right? Uh, it's not right to give, take the shoes of the bread and throw it to the dogs. And she said, yes, Lord. Yet even the dogs eat the crumbs that fall from the master's table. Now, again, the book has been changed, corrupted, the Bible. But one thing I want to tell you is this. this is that it shows you. Remember, this is written by Jewish uh, scholars and, and writers. So, it shows you how they think. This is why I'm showing you this. Because it gives you into their perspective, their mind, how they see Gentiles, infidels, how they see Christians. They see them as dogs. Because they're not, they idol worshippers. They don't believe, and based on the books that I already show you, they believe that eventually one time they will come and burn you or kill you because, you know, that's what it is. And I believe that that's exactly what's going on in Palestine. Okay? Keep in mind, that you all heard of the stories of Moses and all that. The, that's the his, biblical event. But historically, historically, Moses was expelled from Egypt. Okay? Uh, historically, uh, Moses was expelled. Uh, if, if indeed that did happen, because it talks about uh, uh, evil people that were his cause. You can look it up. Now, again, you can see Joseph was a dreamer. I can go through the whole story and I'll do it real quick. Joseph was basically uh, one of the sons uh, of Jacob. Okay, and real quick, Joseph, the son of Jacob, which uh, Jacob, God changed his name, as you remember from the beginning, to Israel, had 12 kids, right? You need 13 if you count the daughter, but 12 men. So one of the boys was the youngest, was Joseph. Now Joseph, the father of Jacob, loved him a lot and did a coat for him of many colors. Now the brothers were jealous of him because he used to interpret dreams and know how to read and write books when all of them were illiterate. So the father one time uh, sent out Joseph to go check on his brothers in the field, see how they were doing. The brother used to get all jealous, and one day one plotted them to kill him. And eventually one of the brothers fell, you know, back. That's our brother, um, which was Reuben. And Reuben told him, please don't kill our brother. They just um, dumped him in, in, in a well. So they went and took off his jacket, uh, ripped his jacket, dumped it in a well. And, and the jacket, when the father came back, they sold his brother to the Ishmaelites, which that's their own bloodline, remember from, you remember from Abraham, Ishmael, but sold it to the Ishmaelites, and they took him as a slave to Egypt, his brother Joseph. But that coat, they put blood on it and all that, and when the father came, made it seem like an, a wild animal killed him, and the father cried and all that. So that's the story of Joseph. So, but I want you to remember, because I want you to say something with Joseph. Joseph, okay, uh, eventually became, and you can see, you can look it up, versus we how uh, one thing goes, that's something else. But Joseph became a ruler. See? Genesis chapter 41, 34 to 42. He became second to none. And it had to do because he was able to interpret dreams. I could tell you the whole story about it. But basically, uh, he was eventually working for a master and got arrested because they are alleged that he raped the woman when he ran away from her, allegedly. And he eventually got arrested. And in the jail, he was able to interpret dreams from these people that were prisoners that used to work in, in, in Egypt. So eventually, two years go by, and they come back as a uh, emperor wanted to understand what was the dream about and it comes back that there's somebody that interprets dreams which was Joseph and they got him out of jail out of this dungeon brought him over and he interpreted the dream had to do with seven years of job and seven years of prosperity so he was able to uh, interpret the dream what it meant so he eventually what he did was he asked um, the emperor okay let's grab one fifth of the land you know and for storage now, what happened was that that's how the form of taxes came about. You, you read this study very well, because eventually when the drought came, was 70 years of prosperity, they were saving food, right? They were saving food. But when the drought came in, they didn't have, they didn't have that prosperity. So what happened was now they were able to sell to different countries, right? They would come by nearby nations, right? And they would sell because they had a lot of stores, so they became very rich. But the story continues where the point is where his brothers come back, and it's a long story, his brothers come back and they rec he recognized the brothers, but they didn't recognize him because he was second, right, to, to, to the emperor, right? And eventually, uh, he sent his brother. So you can see he was blessed. He was blessed. He became very rich and all that. You want to believe that story? Uh, but the point is, is this, that eventually he brought in his family and they started multiplying and multiplying. Eventually, 250 years later, you know, a lot of these Israelites were very rich and very multiplied and that created an issue with uh, Pharaoh, where they wanted to kill uh, and minimize his people because they were scared they were going to become too powerful that they, uh, they, they're going to outnumber them and fight in the war. So he sent out to kill all the babies of a certain age, 
and they eventually from uh, the mother who used by the way the mother who had used to work in Farrell. Think about that. They always got close to the people in power. But used to work <laughs> in um, Farrell, sent Moses in the water as a baby after three months being born, and they raised Moses as a prince. Okay? Moses raised him as a prince, and then eventually, according to the biblical event, you know, he comes God, there's a lot of seven plagues in, in Israel, and they let him go with his people, and they left with gold and all that, and went to the promised land, and that's where the story begins with the promised land, and it happened to be a land that they robbed, killed, and murdered, so I'm sorry, raped, so that's the part that I don't understand. Now, historically, there's a group of people named the Hiscos, like written in stone in the pyramid, Hiscos, and they actually was the people that alleged that were evil, and they got expelled. Now, one thing I have to tell you, and I'm sorry for the Jew, because there's a lot of good, good, good Jewish people, all right? But maybe they got to ask themselves, what are they doing that they keep getting, getting, think about it, they keep getting expelled from many current countries. If you don't know, the Jewish people have been expelled from 109 countries, including Rome, civil wars, and a lot of them were accused of usury because they invented at the time, you know how we pay interest right now? Well, that was considered illegal back then because if I have $1,000 and we charge you 10% interest, how can I give you 10% money on money that I don't have? That means I got to grab for somewhere else and eventually that starts compounding and your fund compounding and eventually, like our system, it eats up and eventually it's down to failure. So a lot of people knew that going our founding fathers, which is why they didn't want a centralized bank, okay? But nevertheless, they were accused in England as well, Spain, Palestine, Babylon, Portugal, Germany. You, we all know what happened. Um, a lot of them was to do with extremists, uh, usury laws, and some of it may have been made up by men, but that's the point. And that's why they didn't want, a lot of people didn't want the Jewish people. And eventually in 1918, they had agreed since 1800, but 1918, they came with the Bachler Declaration, actually 1917. And eventually they, in 1948, they passed into law and took Palestine and created a, a state of Israel. So uh, who idea was it? You can look it up yourself. All right, it was one of the Rothschilds. And if you don't know who Rothschild is, they say Nathan Rothschild said it himself. This is an actual fact. One of the richest men in the world. And he said, give me control of a nation's money. And I don't care who makes its law. Because it's true. And all these nations, sometimes if you owe money uh, to a family, think about it. They could easily make laws. It doesn't matter what laws they are because they control the law. I'll take away the money and you broke. So I want you to see that and um, study that. Now, if you're going to continue, like I said, follow the money. And I'm going to show you, follow the money. Remember what happened in 9-11? I don't want to say, listen, it, it was speculations, but this is a fact. Six weeks before 9-11, Larry Silverstein bought the Twins Tower and insured it against terrorism. And we all know what, what happened. Okay? He got paid. This is something you may not know. Besides the two Twins Towers, there's another third tower that went down and didn't get hit by a plane. People let five. No, this was a demolition guy. But if you want to believe, whatever, it's fine. But look at this. This is a fact. A lot of witnesses saw the dancing Israelite Israelis in a van with a, a mural of a twin tower on fire. Many witnesses saw them dancing. Okay? Now I want you to follow that because let me go back here. Let me minimize this. See this here? Alright? Alright? Israel has attacked us before. Okay? For those that think that they haven't, if you can look up USS Liberty and many other soldiers that died, some of them that are still alive that complain about it. But I want to show you something so you can don't think that I'm just making this up because this is it. This is history, guys. Okay? This is history. And I want you to understand this. Okay? Watch this. This right here was a ground zero. This is Larry Silverstein. Okay? He's American Jewish. Silverstein. American Jewish. He's the one that bought the Twins Tower. And you can see uh, in New York, uh, six weeks before September 11 attacks in 2001. Okay, so you can verify that. So, like I said, follow the money because if you remember, that gave us the justification, right, to allegedly go right after that and use that as an excuse to go and invade Iraq. And you know, if you don't know, a million Iraqis have died based on the false pretense of mass uh, weapons of mass destruction and that how they had something to do with 9 11 and a bit of a bin of Laden was over there and all that crap. But anyway, here we go. So, who were the dancing Israeli? This is actual fact. Look, they were arrested. All right? They were arrested. They were charged. The FBI came and picked them up, and they hold them for around six weeks. You can look up. It's called the dancing Israeli. They had a van, a white van, with a mural. A lot of people don't talk about that, of the Twin Towers on fire. I saw that myself at that time, but they hide that.